but let's put that verse into a context. So we'll read from 1 Corinthians 1, verse 4 through to verse 9. So in our Bibles then, 1 Corinthians 1, reading from verse 4, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, so that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you came short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then verse nine, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now we're going to take that statement in verse nine, God is faithful. And I want to do something slightly different today in terms of a sermon. I want us to build uh, our understanding of what that statement means. So God is faithful, it's very simple. Uh, as you can see, it's just three words. I want to, if you like, put together uh, from Lamentations, from 2 Thessalonians, and even from this epistle, 1 Corinthians, I want to put together a way of thinking about the statement, God is faithful. So hopefully we can leave today and those three words we'll carry with us, God is faithful, and we may also have some support from our Bibles to encourage us to go on thinking about what that statement means. So God is faithful. That's our theme for the morning. Let's ask God to bless us. Lord our God, we are coming to think of you as the God who is faithful. And so we ask, Lord, as we do that, that you would bring this truth home to each one of us that lord we may not only hear but we may also understand that we might have some evidence some scriptural support for this statement lord we look at it and straight away we can recognize its emotional significance it sounds wonderful that you are faithful. So Lord, we ask you then to speak to each of us as we engage with this statement this morning. Each of us, according to our need, may your blessing rest upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. So first of all then, I want to say two things about this statement, God is faithful. The first, it's a way of understanding the entire Old Testament. Now, during the first weeks, I think, of lockdown, we were able, if you were able to join on Zoom, we were able to go through the books of our Bible. So starting at Genesis, we went during those weeks through all the Old Testament books, and we thought again about the story, the story of Israel, and uh, the story of individuals, and we, we looked at the books there. But I guess what's also good is to have a key to unlocking the whole of the Old Testament. One phrase that you can take with you, and choose that phrase in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9. The Old Testament is a story of the faithfulness of God, and his faithfulness is set against the backdrop of the unfaithfulness of the people in the Old Testament. So whether we are thinking of individuals in the Old Testament or the whole of Israel, the story from a human point of view is the story of unfaithfulness. But then when you meet God, it's his faithfulness that we see again and again. He's faithful to individuals like Adam or Noah or Abraham, and then he's faithful time and time again to his people Israel. 
So keep that in mind then. As you look at the Old Testament, it's the story of the faithfulness of God. And there's a wonderful word in the Old Testament that sums up the faithfulness of God. If I just give you the word, it's the word hesed. It's a Hebrew word and it's often translated in the Psalms as loving kindness. You may have the word compassion also used to describe this. And the idea is God made an agreement with Israel. That agreement is called a covenant. So an agreement between God, first of all, made to Abraham. And then after Abraham, the same agreement was made with uh, David uh, and with others. And that agreement, God committed himself to be faithful to. So whatever Israel did, whatever the individuals did, in terms of that agreement, God would be their God, they would be his people. Whatever they did, God remained faithful. And uh, his faithfulness was then shown in compassion and mercy and grace. Now that's the Old Testament story. And of course, just to remind you, the great moment in the Old Testament that put flesh and blood on this idea was the story of Hosea, the prophet. So just to remind you, Hosea was called by God to marry a prostitute. And he did so. And uh, his bride was a prostitute of many years. They had children together. And then we read how his wife returned to prostitution. And Hosea was commanded by God to go on loving his wife, whatever she did. Now imagine, I mean, we tend to, don't we? We tend not to put flesh and blood on these Old Testament characters, but imagine being Hosea, loving a woman who's in a relationship with you, but is unfaithful to you. And imagine loving a woman who takes money to have sex with other men. You are providing for her. You have children together. You've given her a home, but she continues to behave in this way. And God says to us that Hosea is an embodiment of God. That's who God is. He loves us. He loved Israel in the Old Testament. But we then are unfaithful to him. Now, this is the story of the Old Testament then. So our verse, God is faithful, sums up the Old Testament. But I also want to say one thing to you about this statement itself. So if you look at your Bibles, verse 9, God is faithful. I, I wonder if it triggers any associations for you. Anything stir at all? in your understanding of the Bibles. As you read those three words, God is faithful. Any of you reminded of the Apostle John and what he tells us about God? Any of you? John says, God is love. And then in the same letter, he says, God is light. And Jesus, recorded by John on one occasion, says God is spirit. Now, those three statements, God is spirit, God is love, God is life, uh, we all know, don't we? We all know, and we've all understood them and thought about them. And we've said over the years, those three statements are fundamental statements about God. What Paul does here in verse 9 is he adds his own. So when you read God is faithful, you are meant to take those three words and to put them alongside God is spirit, God is light, God is love. And what you have here are called the positive statements about God. God is. Now, can you just think about that for a second? These are positive 
statements. And I know, I, I'm sure you do, that sometimes it's hard, isn't it, to, to understand a, a statement about grammar. So here is a statement, God is. And it's a positive statement. God is being described in positive terms. Now think about how often God is described in negative terms. So as an example, do you remember uh, God said on one occasion, I think it was maybe a prophet said about God, God is not a man that he should repent. So can you see the word not is a negative statement. God is not a man. God does not lie. God cannot sin. God does not change his mind. He is not a man that he should relent. Now, all of those statements are negative statements. They say something negative, not in a bad way, but a negative statement about God. What God does not do or cannot do or is not like in contrast to us. Now, our Bible is filled with negative statements about God. But here is a positive statement. God is. So we are being told something that God is in his essential nature. God is faithful. So I want you to hold that in mind then in thinking about God, because the great challenge is to talk about God in a way that makes sense. God is undefinable. God is eternal. He's infinite. God is, is eternal. How can we talk about God when God is so much greater and so much more wonderful than we can ever imagine? I think I've, I've reminded you now and again about the very first Bible study we had together. It was based on Psalm 145, and there's a verse in there that says, God is undiscoverable and that's how we begin in our understanding of god he's unsearchable so it's so difficult to talk about god in a way that reflects who he is so that's why we've got lots of negative statements god is not like this and he's not like that and he does not do this and he does not say that because that's that's all the language we've got to try and describe god but here is that ray moment then where we have a positive statement this is what god is like he is spirit, and he is light, and he is love, and he is faithful. That's who God is. So bear that in mind. And of course, when you and I think of Jesus Christ, Jesus is God made flesh and blood. So we look at Jesus Christ and we see God, and every aspect of the life of Jesus, every word of Jesus, is a revelation about god jesus asleep jesus hungry jesus thirsty jesus crying all of that is a revelation of what god is like because we we cannot know god in and of himself so we see jesus and we see god and it's in the faithfulness of jesus that we see the faithfulness of god so Let's continue then with our text. And the first thing I want us to think about, having made these introductory remarks, if you like, is the idea that it's all about relationships. When we have the statement, God is faithful, what we need to say there is he is faithful to his people. God will be faithful to you. God will be faithful to me. And God will be faithful to his church. And so to, to build on that, will you turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. Now, this is a verse we've looked at many times, and I'm choosing this verse 
simply as an expression about the way in which God will show you his faithfulness to you. So we have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. We are in covenant with God. God has made an agreement with us. He's agreed to save us. He's agreed to forgive us. God has agreed to adopt us as his sons. God has agreed to conform us to the image of his son. God has agreed to us having a place in eternity. So God is faithful to his agreement with us. Now, take a look at 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. And you'll see why I've chosen this verse. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. Now, hear the next bit. God is faithful. So the second time in this letter, there's Paul once again offering you this positive statement about God. God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. And he will not allow you to be tested beyond what you are able to be. And with every testing, he will make the way of escape. Now, I'll talk about that in a second, that you may be able to bear it. So God is faithful to you and me. How is he going to show that faithfulness? He will do two things, according to this verse. He will never allow us to be tested more than we can be. Now, how many times have you felt that you are tested and you're at that point where it's more than you can be? You felt it, but the faithfulness of God means God will never allow you to be over-tested, to be overwhelmed with pressures. He will not, because if God did that, He's being unfaithful to you. So he will not allow you to be tested more than you're able to be. And, says Paul, because God is faithful, with every testing, he gives you the means and the strength and the grace to endure. That's the faithfulness of God to his people. Now, I also think the beginning of the verse is really important. And this opening statement is Paul. So Paul isn't talking about God now. He's talking about you and me. He's saying no testing has ever happened to any of us except that which is common to man. And you may feel, and I know some of you have over the years, you feel singled out. You feel unfairly tested. That something's happening to you and it's happened to no one else. Nobody else has gone through or felt what we are feeling. That's, that's our thoughts sometimes. But here is a very simple statement. No testing has happened to any of us except that which someone else has had. And somebody else has been through. And someone else has known. Now, you might argue with this. But here is the statement. And if you were then sitting there and saying, well, Neil, I can't think of anybody who's gone through what I've gone through. Let me point out somebody who has. And that somebody is Jesus Christ. Because he has been tested in all ways like us so even if you can't come up with a, an example from family or friends there is that example of jesus himself so here is the, a verse then to take with you how will god show his faithfulness to me he will never allow me to be tested beyond what i'm able to be 
And running alongside that, with every testing, he will give me the grace to endure it. Do you see the idea? So let's look at the second uh, point that I want us to think about. And that's this idea that God is faithful to his promises. And uh, what we're thinking about here is the faithfulness of God to his word. Whatever he has said, whatever you read in your New Testaments or in your Old Testaments, God is faithful. He is committed to performing what he said. For God, words are expressed in actions. It's not the case of we'll be told one thing by God and then another thing will be done. And can I just say all of us have had this, haven't we? We've had this during perhaps the pandemic. We've had people tell us one thing and then something else is done. It may be that in terms of the health service, you've been told one thing, that you'll get your test or you'll get your appointment or you'll get your injection or you'll get your, you've been told one thing and then you get another thing. And I hate to be political, I don't really, but I'm told I shouldn't be. We get told by our politicians one thing, don't we? And then we get another thing. Now, when we say God is faithful to his word, what we mean is God says one thing, and that's what you'll get. Whatever he says, that's what you can rely on, you can depend on. You can commit yourself to, because that's the faithfulness of God. So a verse that sums this up then, if you want to add your verses together this morning to take home and to reflect on further, it's the verse, the promises of God, you know it? What are they? The promises of God are yes and are men in Jesus Christ. So there's no doubting, there's no wriggle room, there's no equivocation. What God says is what God does. Now, let me give you the context of that verse. 2 Corinthians, think chapter 1. Paul had promised to go back to Corinth, and he had been unable to fulfill his promise. So the uh, members of the church at Corinth said, oh, you know that, Paul? He says one thing and he does another. He says he's going to visit us, and then he doesn't. So Paul's unreliable. You can't count on him because he says one thing, and then, you know, well, whatever. Now, Paul says, yes, this is what you accuse me of, but let me tell you, with God, what he says is yes and amen. Yes is the beginning of the process. Amen is the conclusion. God will say it. And God will bring it to an end, whether it's about your sins, whether it's about his grace. What God says to you is what you then can absolutely rely and depend on because God is faithful. So take a look at 2 Corinthians 1. There's a verse in 1 Thessalonians as well that we can think about if you wish. But here is the idea then of God being committed to his word, because God is faithful. Let's look at the final uh, of our three points then. It's on the newsletter there. And uh, the third point is this. It's about character. When we say that God is faithful, we are making a fundamental statement about the nature, about the person, of God. And for this, I want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. We read earlier from this faithful saying. So if you've got your Bibles there, 2 Timothy 2, and this faithful state saying is a, it's a creed. It's a little poem that the church would have learned in the days of Paul before they had the written New Testament. They would have had this given by inspiration of the Spirit, and the members would have learned it by heart. 
So this is a faithful saying. And at the end of that faithful saying, verse 13, we read there, if we are faithless, now that doesn't mean, you know, faith as in I believe in Jesus. It doesn't mean that. It means if we are unfaithful, and we are all at times unfaithful, for whatever reason, we can be unfaithful to God. Now, when those moments occur, when you find yourself unfaithful to God, this is what you need to remember. God remains faithful. So go back to Hosea. When you and I have loved in a way we shouldn't, said the things we shouldn't, or even done the things we shouldn't as Christian people. In those moments, God remains faithful to you and me. And why is he faithful? Because it's his nature, it's his character as God. Look at how this verse puts it. Verse 13, he cannot deny himself. Now, think back to what I said to you at the start. God is faithful is a positive statement. God is. He is this. He's like this. Now, do you notice at the end of verse 13, we've got a negative statement. God cannot deny himself. So Paul puts a positive statement about God and a negative statement about God together. God is faithful and he can never go against his character. He can never act in a way that is against his nature. He remains true to who he is as God. Now just think for a moment. You and I act against our natures. Because of sin, we constantly act against our nature. So my nature as someone who is, is made in the image of God, I often act against that. And then I have the Spirit of God who has regenerated me. So I have a new nature, the Christian nature. Let's not discuss that too much, but we, we have a born from above nature, Christian. And yet we act against that Christian nature. So often we do. And we can act against our Christian nature in ways that are surprising and shocking. So we act against who we are all the time. But by contrast, here is a God who cannot act against his nature so he always is who he is and god is who he is no matter what you do and no matter how i act and no matter what i'm like or whatever i feel whatever goes on with me god is always who he is he is always the god who is love he is always the God who is light. He is always the God who is spirit. Because he is always who he is as God. And so you look at his son, Jesus Christ. And the one who will come again on that day is the same one asleep in the boat, the same one hungry in the desert. There is no change with Jesus Christ. And there is no change with God. So let's go from here this morning then. God is faithful to me. He is faithful to me, even if I am unfaithful to him. God will never allow me to be tested more than I am able to be because he's faithful to me. I can rely on his word because he's faithful to me. And God will never change how he, he loves and how he saves will never change let's pray together lord our god